In this video, we're gonna make a protractor arm that fits with the original bandsaw jig. It will allow you to make complex shapes with your bandsaw. To start this off, you're gonna to wanna to have a five and a half inch square. That means it's exactly five and a half inches this way and five and a half inches this way. Now that we've got our square, we wanna find the exact center of it. We're gonna talk about a protractor. A link to this protractor will be in the description as well as on the website, but it's basically five and seven eighths wide. What we wanna do is we wanna take our protractor and we're going to fit it on the top of our X. We want the X to fit between 90 and 90 and zero and zero. If you're able to line it up on the X, then you're good. We wanna cut this down so that it's actually smaller than the outside of the circle here. There's a number of ways of doing that. I'm actually gonna do this with the circle jig that I made for the bandsaw, but you don't have to do that. I made a sheet that you can print off. You'll cut out the circle, add some glue, and then line up the lines and then let it dry. When it's dry, take it over to the bandsaw and then cut around that circle as clean as you can. Since I'm gonna use my circle cutting jig, we'll go ahead and do that now. At the drill press, I'm gonna hit the center with a quarter inch drill bit. I set my sliding miter arm at two and three eighths inches, which is the radius of the circle that I want to cut. And now I'll go ahead and cut this out. When you attach this, you wanna have your X on the top of your circle, and you wanna have your numbers so that they're backwards. So that's the front, this is the back. We'll want to attach this to our protractor. I think I'm gonna use some epoxy. Again, when we put this on the top, we wanna to make sure that our numbers are facing the opposite way. So I'll go ahead and flip this over now so my numbers are the correct way. I'm gonna add my epoxy. Now again, I'll flip it over and I'll line up those lines. Now I'm gonna let this sit and cure without clamping it. I wanna make sure that, that there's absolutely no movement. We'll come back in a little while. This is cured, but I wanna go ahead and add a couple more screws on this cross section here. So I'll add these two number eights that are a half inch in length. They're cone shaped, so I'm gonna to need to use a countersink bit to get them below the surface of the plastic. If I look at this, this is zero, there's one there, so I'm gonna put one there, and then I'll put one over here. Instead of using a brad point bit, I'll be using a twist drill bit, which will allow me to cut into the plastic a lot better. Having that point can actually crack the surface instead of cutting into it. I'm gonna go ahead and lock my drill press before my drill bit hits the, the board down here. That guarantees that when I drill this through that I'm not gonna go all the way through the bottom. I've switched over to a countersink bit, which will give us that cone shape in the plastic. Now I can use a screwdriver to screw these in. And you'll wanna make sure that there's nothing raised on the plastic, which I feel little burrs up here, as well as your screw being all the way in. So I'm gonna go ahead and remove the little burrs that I feel. With both screws in, we're gonna to wanna to flip it over now and use another twist bit. This is a quarter inch twist bit to drill through the top and through the plastic on the bottom. I'm gonna take my time with this because I don't wanna worry about cracking that plastic on the bottom. Just like before, we wanna make sure that we get that raised section right there. Now that this is added and done, I wanna add an arm to the top. Now this is a little bit too long for an arm. In reality, I probably just wanna go over the sides of the protractor, but I've kept it long on purpose because I wanna add a track. And I find it safer to keep it longer so that I can cut a channel in the top. Just like the T-track on the base, I'm gonna do the same thing up here. I'll cut in from the fence enough that I can get this to fit in the inside. And when I'm done, I'll cut this down to size and then I'll cut this to size and I'll add epoxy to this and inlay it and we'll go from there. I'm gonna go ahead and put my T-track next to the blade. I want the blade to be as close to the top as I can make it. This block of wood is about an inch thick. I do want this to be in the exact center of this. I could measure this out to get the exact center for it or we can just move the blade to be close to the center of the block and then we'll just move the fence until we're able to slide this in the top.
And there we go. It's really important that we make sure that we don't make this too tight because if it's too tight, it will cause the outside to, to bow out. We don't want that. So I made this as close as I could. I maybe gave myself maybe just a hair's width in the inside here that will allow me to add some epoxy to it. I'll cut this down to six and a half inches, which is just slightly bigger than the protractor. <laughs> Before I forget, I'm gonna go ahead and rough the surface up on this so that the epoxy has something to grab onto. We'll come back when this is cured. Now that the epoxy is cured, I'm gonna go ahead and cut this to size. I want this to be a perfect square. So because this is an inch over here, I wanna cut this down to an inch. I need to find the center of this so that it will fit on the plate that I just made in the center hole. So to find the center, I'm gonna take a ruler and I'm going to connect my diagonals. And I'll just draw a line across. I'll use an awl on the center. We'll use a quarter inch brad point bit to drill this out. Now that we've cut the arm, it's gonna go on the bolts. We want to attach the arm to the protractor base, but we want it to be at a 90 degree angle with the 90, or sitting exactly on the zero. When we attached a ruler, we made sure that it was parallel to our cut and parallel to the edge. That means that each one of these lines should be perpendicular to the edge. Before we go calibrating this to our protractor, we're gonna drill two holes that are an inch away from the center hole. I'll be using two screws. These are an inch and a quarter. And I just wanna drill a hole that's just slightly smaller than the threads here. So I'll put a ruler up to the bolt and put a mark at one inch. If I grab my drill gauge, it looks like 530 seconds is gonna be a really loose fit. Now I'm gonna put this on the edge over here, or at least close to it, and I'll set my 90 degree line on one of these perpendicular lines. Now you might find that it's easier just to get it right next to the line, and then compare the two, the distance between the two like that, or even just to put it on the line. Now I'm going to line this up to where I think it looks like it's balanced to the T-track. When I get it approximately where I want it, I'll go ahead and put the nut on. Now I'll add the screw, and we're only gonna do one side. I'm just gonna get this down far enough that I can feel the wood below. Now I've got a piece of wood here that I know is parallel on both sides. I'm gonna take a square, and I'm gonna draw a line. I'll go ahead and line up the line to my blade, and we'll see how it cuts. Now if we look at the line that I just cut, you can see that I started with the pencil mark on the top, but when I got down to the bottom, I started cutting into the pencil right there. That tells me that this arm is too far down this way. It means I want to loosen the screw, loosen this up, and then just move just the arm slightly forward on this side. I'll actually go ahead and draw a line down here so I can gauge how far I'm moving it. So I'll go ahead and loosen this. I'll push down on this because I don't want it to move. And I'll loosen that. It just went up a little bit. Go ahead and lock this again, and I'll tighten this up. I'll grab a square and I'll draw a line again. I'll find a tooth again, and I'm gonna put this on the outside, and we'll cut it and see where we're at. And that actually looks worse. I think I went the wrong direction, which is okay. This is a bit of a guessing game. I'll loosen this, loosen this, and then I'm gonna cover up my line that I made earlier, just a little bit. And I'll go ahead and lower the screw. If I look at this, it looks like you can see the line all the way down, and it looks like I'm right next to it. Now that we've calibrated this to approximately where we think that it is accurate, we're going to add a fence on this side. If you watch the circle video, it's pretty much the same thing. We have an arm that will fit on the side here, and a machine screw will fit in the slot. We'll do this because we don't wanna have anything hanging over that could be pulled down by the bandsaw. Essentially, this is as thick as our protractor and our circle that we attach to each other. The width of this, I made it to be three quarters of an inch. I guess you could make it a little bit thinner if you wanted to. And of course, it's just as long as my sled. There's a hole that I drilled out that will fit a machine screw. You can see that I've added that cone shape on the top. The cone screw is three quarters of an inch, and I've got a really flat 
nut that fits right inside my track and it doesn't take a lot of pressure to hold this down. So I'll go ahead and show you how I made this. First we'll measure the thickness of our protractor and the circle that we made and mine comes to 0 0.58. 0 0.58 is 19 30 seconds of an inch. I found a scrap piece of one by two. I need to cut this to six inches and then I'm going to cut it to width which again is 19 30 seconds. I've set my table saw fence 19 30 seconds away from the blade. I'll turn my one by two on its side and I'll just cut right up to this line. And I'll cut the rest of it off with a handsaw. And that's our arm right there. I wanna drill a hole going into the track. I'm just gonna mark right there. So as you can see, I found the center and I carried the line over. On the top, I'm gonna to use a machine screw so I want to create that cone shape. Now I'll go ahead and put the arm on. Again, I have a thin quarter inch nut underneath here. With this on, we can finish calibrating our protractor arm. I'll go ahead and screw this screw in and I'll loosen the nut. We're gonna cut a pentagon out with this. I've got a sheet here that, that has regular polygon shapes on it. This is the shape over here, the number of sides, and then the angle divided by two, which will allow us to create that angle when we cut it. If I look at a pentagon, that's five sides, and we'll need to set our protractor arm to 54 degrees. I've got a piece of scrap here that's about a half inch by three quarters of an inch, and I'll cut out five pieces and we'll see what our angles come to. I'll take some tape and I'll line up my pieces end for end. And now we'll put them together and see what we've got. Once we have this all together, we'll look at it and we'll match it with one of these three pictures. If there aren't any cracks here and everything looks perfect and that it all fits together really well, then you don't have to do any more adjusting. But if you have one of these scenarios, we'll adjust it from here. If you look at mine, you can see that all the segments come together inside. This one matches this here, which means that all of my angles are a little bit too big. As an example, I made the angle here 55.9 degrees instead of the 54 degrees, which again is too big. And you can see the shape that it makes here, which mirrors this pentagon that I made. We'll look at the key and we'll decide if it's too big, which is the one that I had, I'm gonna turn this arm clockwise. So my arm is gonna go this way just a slight little bit. If the angles were too small on the inside, I'd wanna turn it counterclockwise. I don't wanna add a pencil line and use it like I did the first time around. Instead, I'm gonna use a knife. To add a mark, we're gonna look at the fence here. If we wanna turn it just slightly counterclockwise, we're gonna wanna put a mark right here. Since I need to move mine clockwise, I'm gonna go ahead and put a mark on this side. I'll loosen up my screw. I'm gonna hold onto this really tight and I'll loosen the nut. And now I just wanna move this a slight bit so that it just barely covers that cut that I made. I'll tighten this up. Now I'll add the second screw in here. I'll take this off. And if you remember these screws that we put down here, we're gonna go ahead and take them out. I'll go ahead and drill this to the inch depth that I need. On the top, you can either take the screws out or just drive them all the way in. And now we should be much more precise. I went back and cut them again and we'll see how they turned out. All the points are touching on the inside and as well as on the outside. If we again compare it to the last one, you can see the problems that we had and then zeroing it in. Operation at this point should be self-explanatory. As I mentioned earlier, there's a sheet that you can download. It's called Regular Polygon Shapes. It's on my website. And you'll notice again that the shapes over here, the number of sides that you're looking for, and then over here is the angle divided by two. That means if I cut two 30 degree angles, I'll get a 60 degree angle, which is a perfect triangle. Setting this is easy. We find one of these marks up here to base our line off of, and then we'll lock it in place. Now I'll admit this system does allow some errors to happen. Before you start using this on your main project, I would set it, use a test piece, and make sure that it's going to come out the way that you want it to. Now I'll admit triangles are really difficult to conquer. But if you really want to do a triangle and you just can't get it to come out right, grab a ruler, stick it inside the track, and put it right up next to the protractor. With this next to the protractor, loosen your nut, and then just turn it slightly. And look at these lines, and I'm just going to turn it just a slight bit, and then we'll lock it down. As far as which side to cut on, you can cut on either side. It does not matter which side you cut on. I have added this track, and I have not made a hold down clamp yet, but I plan on doing some things where you can slide something in and lock it in place 
allowing you to accurately place a piece of stock against it. Um, it'll help prevent it from sliding around. So those things are in the works. I haven't got them done yet. If you're on the website right now, check the header and footer on the page. I might have something that's ready for it. Now, as far as safety goes, I'm going to stress this again. You never ever want to cut a piece of wood that's not being supported. Another option is to glue two boards together that are the same width as the fence and the jig and add magnets to it. And you can place it up next to the blade and you're giving yourself a little bit more support so you don't have that problem of, of the wood being pulled down. The last thing that I need to mention is that when you cut, you don't want to push the arm. You need to be pushing where the miter slot is. In the future, I might add something like a handle that can slide in here so that it's easier to push. But for right now, I push it in the miter slot away from the blade and slide it. Thank you for watching. Let me know if this is something that you might make. If you have an idea of how to do this a little bit better, leave a comment down below. I, I love brainstorming and finding ways to make things a little bit better.